गुड इवनिंग सर ए गुड इवनिंग योगेश गुड मॉर्निंग डेविड ओके सो गाइस टिल नाउ वी हैव कवर्ड एवरीथिंग इन द जॉब ऑटोमेशन राइट and uh, in today's session we are mainly going to see the administrating remote system this is very very important okay so basically what is ssh ssh configuration will be where uh, which daemon is responsible for sshd how we can generate a ssh key pair how we can authenticate between one server to other server right and basically how you can copy a file from one remote server to the other remote server by using scp and same thing how we can do it uh, with the rsync command guys okay so these are the things we are basically going to see today okay so let's start the session guys any doubt before this case friends uh, those who wanted to join the new batch of 100 days of it corporate boot camp live online batch 4 uh just visit my website this is my website i'll put the link in the description uh just go to courses okay so once you visit the courses you can see the uh, upcoming live classes so again uh, 31st july uh, i'm going to start the batch 4 of uh, 100 plus days of it corporate boot camp and uh, you can just click on this link and you can visit what is the duration of this class right what is the mode of this class and uh, when the batch is going to start right and what is the batch timing right and uh, uh, what course uh, access validity you are going to get so even you can pay full amount uh, at a time or you can pay installment also and what you are going the benefits are more important you can visit each and every benefits over here right uh, and even you can visit the terms and condition and also you can see the previous batches candidates who have been placed in this uh, in this uh, 100 days of it corporate boot camp guys okay and even you can see the complete course content it is mentioned over here total 196 session it will be covered in 6 months so yes please go ahead and enroll for this uh, batch 4 which is going to start on 31st of july thank you okay guys uh, uh, so let's start the session so the first thing is what do you understand by ssh guys ssh secure shell that mm -hmm. allow us to just secure shell mm -hmm. what is the default port for ssh 22 22 22 and why why we are calling it as a secure shell because of it is uh, it is uh, more encrypted. secure than telnet and it yeah, isn't is encrypted yes what david is saying it's the guys you need to understand why because it's a secure shell it's not because of its name it's a, whenever it's when you trying to communicate from one server to another server okay so it's uses a tunneling effect i have already explained in the starting of the session right where it's using some kind of algorithm okay so to send the data from suppose you are trying to connect ultimately it's a packet transfer right when you are trying to connect to a server you are trying to connecting through a protocol right that protocol has to be secure and how you are going to make sure you need to encrypt the data right when you send something right that has to be encrypted format and that encryption is nothing but that some kind of algorithm right and it's uses a tunneling effect okay so because of that there won't be any intruder or there won't be any uh, i would say hackers can hack the data in between there won't be any data leak possible but instead of that there is a telnet which is vulnerable right which is open for the for the hackers for the intruders right they can easily hack the data in between because it's not uses any kind of algorithm to make sure your data is secure yes or no guys yes simple yes. okay so this is about your ssh and uh, uh, wait i'll uh, uh, draw one diagram so i have not draw it and then i'll explain this files and all guys in this one it's very simple and easy you no need to get confused okay okay guys uh, by looking at this diagram most of you have understand actually me what uh, i wanted to do it over here right uh, correct so can anyone explain me what is the first one the first diagram and what is the second diagram is all about so 
So the first one, um, I believe, is it's everything is visible. Like it's um, if you're using a password, it's visible because Telnet doesn't have an encryption protocol. It's not secure. And um, the second one is it's using an encryption protocol, depending on what you set it when you configure the keys, I believe. And it's being tunneled so nobody can see uh, what's inside because it's being hashed, being encrypted. Yes, absolutely correct, David. Okay. So I'll make it a little bit more uh, like uh, in a technical term. What David said, it's absolutely correct, guys. Uh, the first diagram shows that it's, uh, it's using a telnet protocol. Okay. So we are not using any kind of encryption while putting your username and password when you are trying from one client server to connect to uh, one client, uh, right? uh pc to a server okay in that case uh it is easy for an intruder or for a hacker to sniff your data within uh, right while you are trying you, you are trying to connect to the other server so basically uh i would say uh, these two diagrams are like telnet can be viewed by anyone okay uh on the network by using a sniffing program so what all those sniffing programs it's sniffing all of you know right sniffing you have means you are trying to uh uh, put kind of a right you are trying to hack something you are trying to uh, get the data in between right so there will be different sniffing program will be there uh, like uh, ethereal is there Trial normally wire shark you guys have heard of this one okay or tcp dump also by using this tcp dump you can know that what sort of a data is getting transfer from client to server right and uh, it is really rather trivial to do this and so anyone on the network can steal your password and other information guys okay by use of this uh this kind of a program basically tcp dump and wire shark right uh they can steal your data okay and uh, this is all about when you are trying to log in to the other server as i said very clearly you are typing your username and the password right which is viewable by anyone who is using the same network and he can use your username password by using these programs what all those programs are there basically wireshark and tcp dump by correct now the second diagram it's very clear that uh, uh, that uh, data is encrypted uh, so this is why we are using ssh connection it's en encrypted on the network so cannot be read by anyone okay uh, basically who doesn't have the session negotiated keys and uh, which is just a fancy way of saying that the data is crumbled normally we say this one but the server still can read the information but only after negotiating the encrypted session with the client you can read this uh, uh, data okay but but that has to be uh, negotiated the encrypted session with the client okay but mostly like uh, in most of the session you have seen that ssh is a strong uses a strong algorithm to encrypt its data so it's rare chance that uh, it's it's get still uh, in between i would say right so this is that reason uh, compared to telnet ssh is more secure guys any doubt on this one no sir what clear okay now moving on to the next part of this one guys uh, what all those ssh configuration file okay all of you know uh, for ssh because since even i am also connecting uh, this is one of the client basically this is a ssh client okay right and i am connecting to my server right so from here if i am connecting so there should be sshd service should be running so what is that service name first we know system ctl okay and status what is that sshd right sshd service you can see here right dot service if you wanted to see the status of this one so it is up and running guys so if you stop this service you won't be able to ssh to this server right correct so and which file is okay. yeah and which file is responsible for this sshd service is the configuration file is involved for this one is uh, if you do ssh right
just do a ls hyphen ltrh guys so you can see uh basically there are two three files you no need to get confused the main configuration file is sshd config file is there okay this is the main config file guys okay so if you do a uh, cat of this file okay you will come to know uh, and we normally even configure this also right uh, when you have to allow a root login yes that also you can do it when you uh, there are so many options you can use it with this sshd config file uh, right you see here and most important part is that uh, in most cases like when your ssh is not you are not able to connect to the server might be your ssh service is down so the first thing is being a good uh, linux administrator okay or uh, i would say it doesn't matter you are a linux administrator or any of the role it's your job is to make sure you should the connectivity checks okay if you do a system connectivity basically what we are doing suppose if i am not able to connect from this moba extern to this server yes or no guys correct if i am not able to connect to this server what is my basic approach my first approach will be like i just wanted to see ping command is working or not right and then i'll try to check that whether ssh is working or not there could be reasons when you are not able to connect to your server through putty through moba extern or any kind of ssh client guys in that case you need to check the sshd service so and even uh, when uh, i worked in uh, hp at that time we configured this one even the authorized key when you authenticate from this server to the other server like this is the other server right and when you try to do ssh ssh from this server to this server it will ask you the password every time it's going to ask you the password the main reason that you have not deployed the authorized key authorized key means what the public key has to be deployed in the authorized key of this server of your client server okay so that we need to make sure we need to do it because if this server is going to uh, if you are going to keep your private key in this server the public key has to be deployed in other server in the form of authorized key that is what it is mentioned over here authorized key files okay and this is how ssh works okay so these are the things plus what all things you can configure uh, there is some parameters let me show you yeah so if you see this if you enable to disable tunneled clear text password change to no here okay if if you want to and there is also here on top of it okay you can see uh, ignores known host so as of now it's commented okay so normally uh, there are some things like suppose uh, if i'll tell you what all these things this i'll explain immediately to you uh, let's come out of this one guys okay one second okay so let me do ssh okay what is the ip of this server guys okay so this is the ip so let's try to do ssh to this server okay i am trying to do ssh so it's asking me the password yes or no guys correct and you see yes, yes. it's asking me the password are you sure you want to continue okay uh, first it's it will ask you to add the known host this is what is all about here okay so if you see there is something called known host it is mentioned here okay so host based authentication no okay so you don't want a host based authentication means if you will take out this one okay yes or no so it will work guys okay so in this case as of now the uh, there will be a i would say it's it's a kind of a you say encrypted uh, 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 thing okay this this kind of a number will be there like this the known host will be added to this uh, other server known host file okay then only you will be able to log into this server so as soon as you do yes immediately it will ask you okay uh, that give the password so if i'll provide the password yeah so you can see uh, i have logged into the other server right so it's asking me the password let's do a exit you see if do if i do if config i am in the other server 255 right this is what i have done just now let's do a control d i came out of i closed the connection of that one 
again okay again if i do ssh and i'll do the ip so it's only asking me the password it's not asking me to add the host to the known host of that other server file right known host can be so first time it's asking but if you don't want those things to be happen to your system so this is why these options are there guys okay when you see host authentication base no or yes right and even ssh uh, there will be root login you want to allow or if you want to make it yes or no like those things all the like configuration you can manage from this file guys permit root login equal to yes if you want the root login permit okay then it will be yes so everything you can manage from this file guys okay so you see here change the yes you don't trust ssh known host for host based authentication this is why i have shown you this one guys okay so if you don't want the uh, uh, that that uh, that thing has to be added to the known host then you can enable this particular value and you can make the changes according to your need okay that makes sense for you guys so but the main question here is it's asking me every time a password because these two are in the same network so why i should give a password all the time right so why it is happening because there is no proper ssh authentication happened between this server to this server this is that reason every time and the main reason behind this one this is also an interview question asked that when you see when you try to log into the other server it's asking you but both the server in the same network right it should not be asking me the password right correct yes or no guys but it's asking you the password so it's basically because of ssh because this is what i told you this is why i have explained this one okay it's because of ssh ssh will prompt you every time the username and the password and it will be in the encrypted format guys to make sure you should be able to log into the other server without any username and the password okay so in that case make sure the public key is deployed in the form of authorized key in this server yes or no guys correct so let's do this one yes. and 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 then it will be easy for us so this is why we are going to do the next step guy here uh generate a ssh key pair right and then finally what we are going to do is we'll be able to log into the other server right so okay guys uh, 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 let's end up the session here only thank you for staying connected with me till then just take care of yourself your loved one bye bye and jai hind thank you thank you sir bye bye good night sir good night